Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and I'm back with a couple more Christmas cards. So to start off with, I die cut some smooth white cardstock with one of the Simon Says Stamp rounded corner rectangles wafer dies. And then I'm working on just my Wendy Vecchi um, station here. This time though, I could have skipped using the station because I'm not using the magnets to hold my stencil. I'm just going to use post-it tape because I want to tape off some of the areas of the stencil. And the stencil is the Christmas Gnome Home stencil <laughs> that came in the Simon Says Stamp December card kit. It is available individually, like I'll have links to everything um, individually. But I'm using post-it tape to tape around just this pine tree in the stencil. And then I'm going to blend over some of Simon's Lucky Dye Ink. It's just green dye ink. The color is called Lucky. Using one of my Studio Cadia blender brushes. And I've mentioned this in other videos with the Simon brand inks. Is they're a very similar formula, if not the same formula. I don't know for sure. As the Hero Arts... Um, dye inks meaning that they smooth out as they dry so however they look when you first stamp them or first blend with them um, first apply them to paper basically is they will change as the ink dries completely and they just become a lot more smooth looking and these inks are technically not water reactive uh, they are a water-based dye ink but they are not reactive with water but same thing i've done other videos showing sort of using them with water and that but I just thought I would point that out because I get asked every once in a while like what's the difference etc um I like these for you know ink blending for stamping I also really like them for doing projects when I apply the ink whether it's stamped or whatever and then I'm going to apply something over it and I don't want it to react whereas you know if you're using like distress inks or hero arts reactive inks um if you apply anything like a paste or water anything over top of it it will react and change and lighten and all that sort of stuff whereas these inks don't basically once they're down they're staying put they're not going anywhere they're not going to change color they're not going to you know react or have water spots or anything like that so after I blend it on just a couple of the trees, I am using stamps from the Gnome for the Holiday stamp set. I just wanted these little like stick figure sort of trees. I thought these would just kind of enhance the little scene I'm creating. So I stamped those with Simon's Evergreen ink. And then I also have the snowflakes from that same stamp set. And those I'm stamping with um, Broken China Distress Oxide ink. I wanted to use the oxide inks because it has the pigment in it so it will show up on top of the trees because some of these snowflakes I'm stamping on top of the trees and if I'd used a regular dye ink for that trying to stamp a light blue over the green you're not going to see it like there might be a little bit of an impression when everything's dry but for the most part you wouldn't see it you want something that's going to sit on top of the paper and that's where either the oxides or a full-on pigment ink would do the trick so stamp my little snowflakes and then I had um, die cut some white cardstock and some tonic gold pearl satin cardstock using the Merry Christmas script wafer die. So I'd cut two layers from white cardstock and then one layer from that gold pearl cardstock that I am just obsessed with. I reach for almost every single card I'm making, especially at Christmas time because, you know, I just I have a thing for gold. So I stacked these together using some craft hacky adhesive. So having the three layers just gives it that extra dimension that I really like. Plus it just gives it, you know, that extra weight and makes it easier when you adhere it to your card. It kind of stands out a little bit more. So I adhered the three layers together. And then for the dot for the eye, I like to use a comma. A lot of times I don't show this on camera because more often than not, my head's in the way. That's why I don't show it. <laughs> You know, I'm kind of leaning over and looking and making sure I'm not losing pieces. But for something that's where I'm adhering those, these tiny little pieces, I use my reverse tweezers as well as my little jewel picker. I find that that just makes it so quick and easy to stack these little tiny pieces together and um, adhere them all together. So I'll just use like my reverse tweezers and then I'll pick it up my jewel picker and press it down into place and then just try not to lose it in the process of, you know, finishing off the rest of the card. So for the card front itself, I'm using some black and white stripe pattern paper. The, this card is for this week's color throw, down, color throw down challenge, by the way. So hence the green, the you know challenge was basically like aqua blue, green, gold, and white. 
So I pulled in the black and white stripes to really like set it off. And I did the same thing with um, the sentiment here. I just cut down a piece of black cardstock and then trimmed it on an angle just to back the sentiment to like make it stand out just that little bit more over these, you know, trees and snowflakes and whatnot that I've got going on my background. So after I adhered that little piece of black cardstock, I'm going to adhere the sentiment to the background and I'm letting it kind of hang over the edge a bit because this is going to get layered on top of that black and white pattern paper. And I'd also cut down a piece of Simon's Surf Blue cardstock to go over the pattern paper as well. Again, just to kind of pull in a little bit more of that blue color. So I've got everything, um, the sentiment and whatnot all adhered into place. Didn't lose the dot to the eye, which is, is a good thing. More often than not, I do lose it. Although I've shown in other videos a lot of times, um, depending on what I've die cut the sentiment out of, I'll use like a little gemstone or something instead. So that's one way to save yourself from like fiddling and stacking and all that sort of stuff. Either leave it off completely or stick a gemstone in its place or a little pearl or whatever. Um, no biggie. So got everything adhered. And then for the inside of my card, I'm using the Inside Christmas Greetings stamp set. And I have one of the, the sentiments from the set and I'm inking it up inking that up with the same um, lucky green ink. So I'm going to stamp that onto the inside of the card and then I'm going to use those same snowflakes from the Gnome for the Holiday set and I'm going to stamp those with that um, Broken China Oxide ink. So then I've got the green and the blue on the inside of the card and then I just I had to bring in that little bit of gold. Couldn't resist. So after I'd stamped the snowflakes I have some of um, a couple little hearts from the inside Christmas greeting stamp set. There's a couple little solid heart stamps. So I'm going to stamp those with Delicata Golden Glitz ink just around the sentiment because I thought it would be kind of cute because it says my heart. So I was like, oh, I'll just stamp some little hearts. Plus it just gives that little extra bit of gold. So it ties the inside in with the outside of the card. So I stamp those. I have to let that dry. The Golden Glitz ink does take a while to dry because that's a full pigment ink plus it's metallic. So it does take a bit longer to dry. So once that was dry, I can then adhere my card front to my card base. And as always, you could leave it here. <laughs> you could, but I'm going to add some blank. So I adhered this into place and I also pulled out some gold envelopes from my stash to like tie it all together too. So I'll show those in a minute. But for the bling, I pulled out multiple types of bling this time. I have some Studio Caudia Prismatic Sky Pearls. They're just the perfect shade of blue. And then I have the May Crystals, which are green. Then I have some gold sparkle crystals, which are clear crystals, but they have gold glitter in them. Love these, love these. And then last but certainly not least, I have the Studio Cotty Iridescent Ice Flakes, which I couldn't resist, you know, sprinkling a few of these in with the stamp snowflakes. So once I was done basically covering this card with bling, I adhered them all into place with some craft tacky glue, just picking them up with my jewel picker, putting down a little dab of the glue, pressing them into place, and then the same thing. I just need to let these dry for a little bit and then they're going to be good to go. So I did two cards. I showed one on video, but I did the other one, the exact same. And then gold metallic envelopes from Simon just to tie it all together and these cards were done. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. In the blog post, I'll have a link to the color throwdown challenge that you guys can check out if you'd like to play along or just see more inspiration using these colors, etc. Um, that's always, my blog post is always the first link in the description box below the video and it takes you right to the post and then all the info is there directly related to these cards, this video. So I'll also have um, the supply list, links all the supplies, so you guys can check it out if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!